Thank you for listening to SSB Wannabes. Make sure you keep up to date by following us on Twitter at SSB underscore wannabes with one E. Sometimes our schedule gets the best of us and we can't record when we want to, so keep your eyes on Twitter and you'll always know when the new episode is up. Anyway, enjoy the show. Music go. Yeah. Uh, all right. All all right. Little... So, do you want to do like a little intro for yourself? Just now? Now? You want me to do it now? <laughs> yeah. Why not? Do it now. I'm get a war machine. I'm a ranked New England Fox player. Third best in New Hampshire. Should be second, but I'm inconsistent and I suck. Um, and I fuck. Simply right. put. There you go. That's a good enough intro for me. Uh, also, he's not lying. I mean, unless he lied to me in DMs, I don't think the uh, the fucking part is is any is any sense of the imagination. Yeah. No, it's it's real. Uh, so, hey man, it's nice to like talk to you. We never really sat down and yeah. talked. Yeah, it's it's dope, man. It's dope. We've we've you know we got the same first name. Um, yeah. So we're friends. We both play Fox. We're friends. You sent yeah. me that gift bag once. That was cool. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember you did the picture of you like. Um, touching yourself yeah yeah i had the i had the uh the what was it, the rx bar covering my dick yeah <laughs> you're definitely the most tasteful um appreciation <laughs> picture we had um but yeah dude there's a lot of things i like it's weird because usually i don't have an agenda but mm-hmm. strangely enough with you there are things i specifically want to talk about so dumb. um like first off your tag Oh, right. so I don't okay. need too much of a, an origin story. You could go as, however deep you want, but I um, I applaud you for keeping this tag throughout being a good player. Because it's easy when you're a scrub to have whatever tag you want. Like no one, yeah. you know, it's all, it's kind of the only way for people to pay attention to you. But now, you know, you have uh, you have your own kind of skill to to a little a little on. following. Yeah, yeah, people know who I am. Right. It is what it comes down to. Yeah. Um, yeah, the fucking tag. Well, my old tag was Hacky, and I hated that tag. H-A-C-K-E-Y. And it was because when I played Counter-Strike in Team Fortress 2, I was Dr. Hacky Sack. That's just what it came down to. I thought uh, Hacky Sacking was pretty cool, so I made it my tag. And once I started playing Melee, it was cool for a little bit. And then I was like, it's so bland. It's so boring. Like, this shit just kind of sucks. And uh, I decided one night, I'll, I'll give you the origin story, actually, just because I love it so much. I was hanging out with Infinite Numbers while he was still on the grind. Him and I have, are close as fuck. And uh, it was three in the morning. We're playing net play and we saw Salty Bet. I love Salty Bet. You know what Salty Bet is? No. Okay, so do you know what Mugen is? M-U-G-E-N? No. Wow. Okay, it is it is a fighting game where people will make their own characters and send them into Salty Bet, and it plays them at like the highest possible level that it can play, like task level uh, CPUs fighting against each other with their own move sets and everything. And there's like tier lists and tournaments that get run, and it's twenty four seven, and it's sick. Wow. And one night we were watching it, and there was teams going on, and Ghetto War Machine 420 was on the screen, and I was like, that's a hilarious tag. What if that was my tag? And Jason looked at me, and he was like, that'd be pretty sick. And so from that point on, I was like, you know what? I'm going to fucking run with it. Because uh, <laughs> I was hacky. I was hacky. And then I tried to switch my tag for like two weeks to Impala, because like everyone in New England was on their car grind. Everyone was okay. for some reason. Some reason, everyone there was Bugatti, there was a uh, young bones villain who tried to be like Tesla or something. The, there was a couple of crazy tags, but I was like, Oh, I'll be Impala, follow the gang because I was still young. That shit sucked too. So, Ghetto War Machine 420 was different enough and crazy enough that it would stand out and be cool. Like, yeah, I like this tag. Smoke weed, I'm down. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so, so today, like, do you feel do you still feel that connection to it? You still like it, apparently. You're, you're telling the story with a smile. I love it. I've got a Ghetto War Machine 420 sticker on top of my computer. On top of my box, I have a little sticker. I love the tag. 
I shit. honestly do. I, I put such a name behind it. Like in New England, there's been like grown working man, great woman master. Like people love to take the GWM and make it whatever they want. And it's always funny. Right. Because I feel like with Poon Slayer, it was such a like, it, it kind of followed me and, and haunted me in a, in a way. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. It was, it was because of, I don't know if you know Chess, one of my best friends. In yeah, the yeah, yeah, the, the, the player, player, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so there was a dude on Facebook who would go by Poon Slayer. He changed his like Facebook name because of like colleges or whatever. Yeah. Um, so it was Poon Slayer, and this guy was like a total D bag, and so we were like making fun of him the day before my first tournament. I'm like, fuck, I need a tag. He's like, dude, you gotta go Poon Slayer, dude. Ah, and. You don't know him that well? That was a great impression. It was actually an amazing impression. But... Of chess or of Poonslayer? No, of chess. Okay. And uh, he starts, like, swinging something around, like, I'm the Poonslayer! Ah! <laughs> and it just, like, it was hilarious for two and a half years. And then for some reason, I felt embarrassed to give my tag to TOs. Especially TOs I wouldn't know. Like, if I, were, if I was traveling around to, like, a, a regional or a small local, and uh, if there was a female TO, I would be like... Ah, ah, yeah, Jesse. Yeah, exactly. So, with enough of those, I was just like, "Do I even like this anymore? Is this who I?" It was a weird existential crisis, but I'm I'm happy that um there are still people out there with some balls who uh <laughs> want to keep their funny tags because because they realize like or at least you have to have some sort of nihilist approach to this whole thing. Like, th- does this fucking matter? Like, why why do I need to have a serious tag at all? You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it just, it's whatever you, like, sometimes, you know, I, when the crowd starts going, like, either Jesse or get a war machine or something like that, it, it amps it up. It's better than if my tag was, like, something super normal. I don't know. I, it, it's, yeah, if, if the crowd was cheering hacky, I'd be like, oh, God, guys, come on, come on, just, like, watch the game or something. But, yeah. you know, everyone getting rowdy, get a war machine, get, like... Like, it's sick. It's sick to have people give that whole, like, the tag the respect, you know? Because right. for me, it's just like, oh, it's whatever. It's a throwaway tag. Get a war machine. Haha, ha, it's funny. But when people, like, see, like, oh, shit, he's legit. Like, there's respect on that name. Right. It's pretty cool. And I'm sure you felt the same. Yeah. I f- you have to feel like it's kind of over it now. But there's probably a point where you were getting good and people would underestimate you based on your tag. Do you, do you ever remember a point where you like you just sneak a win out or something like that? Uh, there's a guy I don't know. I can't think. I'm trying to think of like a specific moment. Um, there's a couple times where I've like money matched people at majors, and they'll be like, "What's your tag?" Oh, get a war machine 420, and they just kind of like smile as they put their five on the table, and then yeah. they you know frown when I get up and take it. Oh, you're you're a money match <laughs> fiend, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying That's to like prove my might, you know? Yeah, you got to grind. <laughs> Earn back the money for the, <laughs> the entry, for the, hotel. the flight, the hotel. Yeah, yep. yeah, man. Yeah. So you've definitely had a rise, like, and just getting people to know you and, and getting Twitch clips and all this, all these results. Um, what do you think it was like? One of the most important things that got you to where this, to where you are now. Like, what advice would you give someone trying to get good that you followed yourself? Uh, stop caring as much. Uh, there's a huge there's a very like huge line between only wanting to win and just going for results and just going for like determined practice and skill set like you're going to plateau at some point because you're not going to be able to get over like a certain mental block when you stop caring as much and you realize that you're playing the game because it was so fun in the beginning like that's how you got hooked you didn't start playing the game and go oh i want to be the best at this right away or i i see hbox and i'm gonna beat him like that can be a little you know thing in the back of your head like a goal at some point but if that's all your play style or all your play is based towards you're gonna eventually run into someone at a local that beats your ass every week and then you're not gonna know how to like handle that you're gonna lose fuck this is so low of my expectations i want to be the best how can i let myself lose to something like that which can be really good motivation but for me it was i was trying too hard at locals it was just like every week if i didn't win or make a crazy upset i was fucking punching my steering wheel or like tossing a controller or something like that it's like the game is just so fucking fun as is like as long as you have fun with it the result shouldn't matter it's all about like 
like learning like uh for example like playing every single set to learn instead of to win like the result doesn't actually matter it's what you take away from the result that matters um, word yeah watching vods shit like that there, there's i could talk about that alone for hours mentality or watching vods mentality yeah no yeah. that's the big thing that like i feel like most people want to talk about because um obviously like people or good players know to you know give props to mentality right it's not like the whole game right now is everyone grind everyone do the like mewtwo king type style that's definitely not yeah. like the melee zeitgeist right now but i feel like pinning down exactly what um goes into a mindset like those actual tangible things you could do for yourself that's the shit i'm interested in most of all because mm -hmm. you could say all day um like I, I think there's a lot of shallowness of people saying it's mindset but not like actually living it and i think you like right away i could tell that you are living that mindset um <laughs> by virtue of you keeping your tag like don't take yeah, any of this too yeah, seriously yeah. but um there's definitely just the, <laughs> the fucking like five net play friendlies we just played yeah. i was just like yo this dude loves this game <laughs> it's just so fun dude it, it's i owe so much to melee for what it's allowed me to accomplish and for what it's allowed me to experience that there's no way i can get too upset because i lost to a samus at a local and then just stop playing you know what i mean i'm not gonna let one person or one certain character just completely thrash the entire game or or one goal that i have in mind completely thwart how i think about the game or yeah obviously i want to be the fucking best in new england yeah obviously i want to do well obviously i want to get sponsored you know fly out to shit etc etc who doesn't but at the same time if that's all i care about then i'm like taking away from the the homies that i've met the the compassion that i've experienced the things that i've gotten to do because of how i've thought about the game like uh i got crowdfunded to smash and splash 420 dollars hilarious by the way 420 dollars <laughs> in four hours out of the 400 goal, only because of all of the homies I had met. I look at the list of people that I donated, close friend, close friend, close friend, and then people from New England that I had met maybe once or twice at a tournament, but the experience that we had together was so like, like genuine and nice, you know? Maybe I, I beat them and I gave them some tips, or we talked and we played friendlies, we went outside, we smoked, like, all of those little things, the little interactions lead up to, to having, you know, the the community behind you and that's so important in getting better because when you're playing like if if i was playing strictly for myself because strictly i wanted to get better i wouldn't have people cheering for me in a crowd or i wouldn't have people to talk to after i had gotten a hard loss or people to be excited with after i'd gotten a good win it would just be like i won for me and i was the one that did it and everyone's gonna think i'm an asshole um but because I think that I'm so nice to everyone and everyone's so nice to me that I, I get powered up by it, you know? In the yeah. crowd, I could look over maybe just out of the corner of my eye after a stock and I see maybe two homies watching me. I can think about that and I can use that to be like, oh fuck, my homies are watching me. Like, let's make this count. Let's do this for real. And then when I win or I lose and I either pop off or I'm sad, like I have that support. Yeah. Because I've definitely seen pictures of uh, your profile pictures. You just scream for someone at a tournament. <laughs> yep, um, that was gang. Yep. It's it's definitely one of your uh, one of your calling cards is just the dude who is just backing his region up, backing his friends up. Um, and I I think I totally agree. Like when you have a network of people that you're kind of playing for, or or uh, playing towards, or or have your back, that just kind of outranks any like practice you know yeah. like we're at the level now where like yeah we got the the tech skill to to win but it's not about the tech skill when you're on the stage playing that dude it's mm -hmm. more about just who can feel it and who can get into it enough um and so i like how you kind of relate it to just where you're at like how it's given you all these things like how much has melee affected your life you know like you touched on it a little bit but um how do you feel like on a day-to-day -day basis when you're not even playing like where does it come into play i'm always thinking about melee that's the crazy thing about it is that when i started playing melee when i was like 15 or so it was my freshman year of high school when i started playing it was just like a whole it was like a whole new world to me and ever since then it was just play 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 
think, 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 you know, because it's such a diverse and such a unique game. And there's so many different things that you can do that no matter what I'm doing, I could be, you know, going on a hike or I could be cooking dinner. And I'm just thinking about like a sick combo that could happen and I'll right. stop and I'll write it down or I'll text my buddy. Hey, picture this in your head. And just that never that never goes away. But for what it's done for me is that it's given me an outlet to grow. It's given me an opportunity to be myself because before I played Melee, I was just like this really ADHD ridden kid that would fucking like just try and be attention seeking at school. I'd come home and I would play video games all day, not talk to anyone other than like random online friends. Once Melee came into the picture, I got like that real life experience of you go to a tournament, you can't be a fucking idiot because people will make fun of you for it. Or you can be an idiot and embrace that and try and learn from it, which is mm -hmm. the route that I took. And it allows you to just be social. It seems like the most introverted thing to go to a melee tournament like three days a week and not like go to the mall and see a bunch of people. But it is so like like freeing i felt so free when i'd be at a melee tournament i wouldn't be at home i wouldn't have to you know abide by the rules of the house or i wouldn't have to be worried about one thing i was at a tournament hanging out with my friends playing a video game i was socializing i was expressing myself and i was growing and i i thank the world i thank melee for that it's yeah it's a lot yeah i think my favorite part of a melee tournament is sitting down with someone i've never played before and you get that like three to five friendly kind of buffer like it just takes a few games and then like one thing happens it's kind of funny and then it's just like floodgates it's and a then bond like, dude. This, yeah and then that's all it takes and it's so it it's so like undeniable because under all of this is like we've all chosen to be at this tournament and take this game as seriously as we take it and then once you kind of get a sense like oh this guy's put in time just like i've put in time or if they're not that good and you just tell that they're trying their best and they're just like in there to to get better and to be in the same community as you it's unlike anything else i've ever done in my life any other hobby any sport any like biology study whatever there's no other bond like it mm -hmm. um and it's cool that you are constantly kind of putting yourself out there and and being the dude that brings people in and is the welcoming force and it's just like yeah like you're not that good bro i'm fucking i'm doing crazy shit all the time like it doesn't matter like i'm having fun with this you should have fun too it doesn't matter um and you have that attitude and get good i think that's a really under underrated aspect of kind of where you're at um, is that you're a fucking threat right now and that's the exciting part no you you definitely are <laughs> like yeah it's just about it's i think it's just about like cracking that that zone like getting in that zone at the right time mm -hmm. um because i consider it like if you're just in a pool and the pool's like growing and the 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 tide is rising of just these players that just take two wins and they're top 100 yeah like that's where you're at man yeah. And that's the crazy part and that's like the the most exciting part about this podcast in my opinion is like there's so many people who just haven't cracked that one tournament. having hadn't gotten that one breakout yet that yeah. one crazy crazy win that everyone freaks out about you know right and i think the attitude of approaching that win is like because i think once you get it once you've kind of entered that realm of top player then it's a lot easier to kind of actually improve your skills, not necessarily like your yeah. circumstance. Like maintain it almost. Right. Because yeah. I think the mental pressure of getting that first win is what stops most people. And I'm curious, like how you think about when you go to tournaments that are that matter, right? Not not a not that locals don't matter, but you like know a, like I mean. a regional or a major or something exactly. like that. Yeah. Like how do you approach? those and how do you kind of bridge the gap between like love of the game and trying to become that top player it, it it all honest to god boils down to me just wanting to be better at the game i love the game so much that constantly i'm thinking about how i can be better at it to again express myself as best as i can because there are times when i play now where it's like ah i wanted to do this but i couldn't hit it 
and and I want to be able to close that to I want to hit this I'm going to try it and if I hit it sick if I don't whatever I'll just do it again or try it next time but when I go to like a major and I see like uh like I have hbox like I went to shine last year and I had hbox as my first seat when I see something like that I think oh I have nothing to lose I have literally nothing to lose at all when I get to this guy I think I had Dr. Z into HBox. I think I was like, uh, Dr. Z is the closest to my skill level, but it's puff so I can handle it. Because it, it, it comes down to confidence, right? right. Uh, when you're playing against someone that's like projected better than you and you think that you have a shot, uh, choking is the thing that holds people back the most, I think. Because if they get close, right? If they have that carefree attitude at the beginning of, I have nothing to lose, but holy shit, I just took a game. Right. I have nothing to lose, but holy shit, I'm up game two. And then they think about it. Wait a second. I'm up game two. I can win this set. Holy shit, I can make this upset. Holy shit, I can make this upset. And then they start thinking too much yeah, about then the it upset. spirals. Too yeah. much about how I could have won. I was about to win. I was so close to winning instead of being like, I have nothing to lose the whole time. Because even if you lose to that top player, they're still projected to win. They were still supposed to beat you, but you just ran it close. Um, so I try and go into every set. I have nothing to lose. I go into local sets. I have nothing to lose, whatever. If I win, I win. If I don't, it's okay. I learn from it. I can go back and I can watch it and see where I went wrong. Um, or you can, you know, not care the whole time. You get the win, break through, and then it hits you. And then it's like, holy shit, I really did that. And right. that, that, like, that mentality alone of, holy shit, I really just did that, like, is enough for me or for someone to be able to be like, I'm, I can do this. I can actually do this. I can actually compete with these guys. I can break through. Because there's that mental block of not knowing. I haven't played enough top players to be like, can I compete with these guys? Can I Can I really get to this point of the game? What is it that's separating me from them? And it's all, it's all mentality. Like, obviously, there's a lot of execution and a lot of experience that comes with being really good. But um, it's all mentality. Like, I played Mike Hayes at Genesis 6. I think last one was Genesis 6, right? Yeah. Thanks, I, so. I think I think it was six. I was playing him in friendlies and it was like I was three stocking him. Three stock, two stock. And then he would take one. Three stock, two stock. He, he would take one. And the whole time I was thinking like this is just some Fox player. This is I have nothing to lose right now because if he beats my ass, he is a ranked good player. But I'm winning games. It shows that I have the potential to do well. I can be this guy. It, it really puts it into perspective of how small but how large the gap is and it, it, yeah it's all mentality right so do you have a game plan to kind of give yourself the best edge or are you just kind of trying to stay within your comfort zone of where's my head at how to make sure i'm not getting ahead of myself like where are you at on those big days do you ever feel like it gets out of hand or that you make mistakes or that you have to, like do you have rituals like how do you kind of handle those those tournaments uh, well, you know, the the pre-tournament prep is always huge, especially at a regional or at a major. Mm -hmm. I try and get a decent amount of sleep, wake up, shower, make sure I'm feeling good, get my hair done. Uh, <laughs> get, get it, some, wait, get it get done? My, get my hair done. No, no. I just, like, <laughs> you know, comb it in the shower, make sure it looks good. Because uh, Infinite Numbers, he was the one that put, this, put me on this mentality. If you look good, you feel good. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. you're constantly thinking, like, if I dress up and I'm wearing an outfit that's popping, I might look at myself in a mirror and be like, damn, you're killing it today. Why are you going to let any kind of bracket demon or any kind of weird mentality stop you? Like, right. you're looking good. Why don't you feel good? Um, a good breakfast is a big deal. But uh, when I go into a like a, a big bracket, for example, I'll give you gang two. When I went into that bracket, it was just like I drove there. We hung out. We played a ton of friendlies. And it's just warming up. And then not really, I didn't really think about bracket that much, but that was one of the best brackets that I had so far. I think I beat, I beat Dawson, the puff from Philly, and then I beat Smokey, and then I beat uh, Juicebox, who's ranked in MBVA, which yeah. it was a pretty, pretty good run. I lost to Lint and uh, Itai that tournament. Good, okay. good plays, good losses, yep. decent wins. Yeah. Uh, and that whole time I was just thinking like, uh, yeah, I can totally do this, but this is going to be really fucking hard. Um, oh, I'll, I'll give you another example. When I was playing Smokey Blunts, right before I was playing him, you know Rohit? Do you know who Rohit is? No. Okay, he's the ultimate shit talker from Philly. Great guy, fucking psycho. Talked so much <laughs> shit while I was there. 
And he's like, he's like, I'll take anyone's five bucks. I got Smokey over Get a War Machine. Anybody, anybody. And my homies are like, yeah, I'll take you up. I got Jesse. And I remember in my head, I was thinking, guys, don't bet on me. Don't bet on me. I'm going oh, no. to lose this set. Don't bet on me. I'm going to lose this set. And then I beat the shit out of him. I just three out him because I had that mentality of like, all right, well, you think you're going to lose. So you have nothing to lose. Just keep trying. Wow. Just try your best. Don't give up. Like you think you're going to lose, but see how good you can do. See, see what you're capable of. Because Smokey had been beating my ass on net play for weeks. I was like, see what you can do. Like this guy might be good online, but let's see if we can beat him in person in front of the boys. And then, yeah, just beat the shit out of him. <laughs> That's uh, wild. Yeah. Uh, Mentality is so fucking crazy, dude. Yeah. It really is such a diverse thing. I think it's hard for me personally to kind of um, kind of cycle back up if I fall into any trap like that. Um, if I don't hit some of my like prep moves, if I don't do what you mentioned, if I if I skip a breakfast or anything like that, I'm lost. Like I don't have I, maybe it's just a, a physiological thing, but um, I don't feel like I'm able to overcome certain things if I don't have like my routine down. Um, so I'm interested to, to hear like, do you have a time where you fucked yourself? Like you just kind of went into bracket totally lost and just took a huge L. Is there anything that stands out to you or do you kind of, uh, I can give you a, well, yeah, I'll, I mean, even yesterday I went to a local yesterday after I slept four hours and then I woke up at seven in the morning, went on a huge hike very intense very hard like six hour like six mile hike jesus Christ. and then right after i was done i slept on the car ride back came back to here showered and went straight to a local and i got fucking owned dude i lost <laughs> to two people i hadn't lost to in a very long time i was seated first i think i got like ninth maybe, wow maybe 13th or something and and even after that i lost and i was like yeah i lost i i knew i wasn't ready to compete at my best today but i still wanted to see if you know could i win this local on four hours of sleep hiking a mountain afterwards because that'd be fucking sick right. instead i could have totally just not entered and hung out um but i wanted to absolutely see if i could do it because it's what 13 bucks and then right. who's gonna make fun of me a, a, who's gonna make fun of me shitters into england melee like random people on twitter like nice bracket run who cares right 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 I, i'm still having fun oh shit there's definitely there's definitely some of some of the juice you got right now i gotta i gotta start taking notes um not because i give a fuck about what people are going to say about a bad bracket but in the moment it's it's it feels hard to kind of get over some of those kind of shortcomings it's hard to put it all in perspective at the time you know yeah. have you kind of always had this you said in the beginning you had kind of problems taking losses and, and carrying too much of locals. Like, what was the turning point? When did you realize you needed to change your attitude? Uh, the second New England... Oh, I got goosebumps just thinking about it. Oh, this is crazy. <laughs> that, that's so <laughs> fucked up. Uh, the second New England Invitational, we had a circuit system going in New England Melee where you place well at locals, you get points, kind of like how... Uh, how any other qualifier, maybe like a Fortnite tournament would do. If you do well at these tournaments, you get points and then you're on a standings total. Okay. And there were like 13 or 12 people that got invited through the standings. And I was at the very bottom of the list of the people. And I needed to get fifth place or better at a mom, which is one of the dead locals here. Mm -hmm. um, I needed to get fifth place or better at this tournament if I wanted to get into the Invitational through points. I need fifth place or better. No, no, no. Seventh, you know, fourth would have gotten me in fifth place or better. And like two days beforehand, people were just posting all over New England Melee. Hey, Jesse needs to get fifth or better. Tagging me in the posts. Uh, people were texting uh. me, texting me. No bullshit. Texting me like you need to get fifth or better tomorrow. No pressure. No sweat. No sweat. Because they knew how that's bad I so, wanted to get in. That's so fucked. Uh. I was getting calls I, when I went to the tournament. People were like, hey, Jesse, fifth or better today. Fifth or better. So I'm dealing with all of that pressure. I could barely sleep the night before. I was freaking out because it's a lot of anxiety, you know? It's right. a lot of pressure with the whole entire region wondering, is he going to get fifth or better today? Mm -hmm. So everyone's watching the bracket. There was 20 people watching all of my sets. And I had to play my best friend, Nick Marcus, Glock in my Toyota, fourth, fifth place. And I was so nervous earlier in that day that I was asking people if they'd throw to me. Just because I was like, I don't think I can handle the pressure. Can you throw to me? 
Like I really was at that point. I was shaking the whole day. Like I had eaten well, I had gotten some sleep, but I was still so nervous. And Nick had told me, he's like, yeah, I'll throw to you. I was like, oh, thank God, you know, what a, what a load off my shoulders. But then we play and right before the set starts, he comes up to me and goes, hey, I changed my mind. I'm gonna try as hard as I can. And I went, <laughs> oh my fucking God. <laughs> Oh my fucking God. And uh, he beat the shit out of me. I was so nervous and he just game five clutched it out. And it, I had never felt such emotion after a set. I had gotten seventh. I wasn't allowed to go to the invitational. After I had lost, I got up, I screamed fuck. I carried my controller through the venue and I grabbed it dude by the wire. Wham! I was walking down the stairs outside the venue and I fucking threw it against the wall and I just walked away. I was outside for over an hour just staring at a wall, head, my hands in my head, just freaking out. I remember going back inside to my controller, someone neatly wrapped it up and put it right next to the doorway. I was like, <laughs> fuck. I, I went back upstairs and as soon as I saw his face, I got so mad and I remember yelling across the venue, was it worth it? Was it fucking worth it? And I'm just staring at him. Was it worth And this is my best friend we're talking about. Someone I would literally take a bullet for. Was it worth it? Was it worth it? Like ready to like cut the ties of the friendship right there in an argument. And after that point, I realized like, dude, holy shit. You're about to lose your best friend over a set from a video game. Calm the fuck down. It's just a game. Do you enjoy the game? Yes, I enjoy the game. So why are you so mad about it? Yeah, you got fucked. Like you, it shouldn't have been, I hope I get fifth. It shouldn't have been, I hope I get fifth or better. It shouldn't have been that. It should have been, I know I'm going to get fifth or better. Fifth is the least of my worries. I'm gonna get second, I'm gonna get third, I'm gonna get first. Fifth shouldn't even, it shouldn't even be in my mind. But I was so fixated on it that when I didn't get it, I just threw a tantrum, dude. And and once I had realized that, wow, this is, this is what I've come to. I've let this kind of pressure get to me and I've let, all of my past experience and mentality and everything else just go out the window just so I could yell at my best friend about how he didn't throw to me. Like, just hearing myself say that, I was like, dude, you're pathetic. <laughs> it's just, it, I was very hard on myself at the moment, but after that, I was like, I'm never getting that upset over a video game again. I'm never allowing myself to even get close to that point over a set again. And so far, so good. No controllers thrown. I got salty like maybe two months ago after I played really bad, but nothing to that caliber. And and after that point comes into the mentality of, I just want to play to have fun. I just want to play to learn. I'm not going to get better at this game if I keep playing to win, because obviously playing to win, playing to get fifth place at the local didn't do so good for me. I got so nervous. I just fucking completely choked it. I threw all of my chances of getting fifth out the door when I started thinking about how shitty I would feel after I didn't get it, you know? Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it's it's that defeatist attitude. That was a hell of a story, by the way. Holy shit. Uh, that's like a an origin story, yeah. you know? Of, of That will never leave my mind. And how long ago was that? Uh, last June. That was last June. So we're about a year. We're about a year out. A little over a year. Yeah, man. Um, I totally get that, though. Like, that's such a relatable kind of feeling because... Uh, just the pressure going in all that shit it doesn't it, it doesn't feel like you were that out of line i mean everyone handles losses their own way right and yeah. i'm sure it's gonna feel like shit when you're at the point of you know either making that top 100 list or you're one good win away from getting the next invitation or whatever the hell it is like there's real Any consequences cool. yeah um so i feel i feel personally like I handle it just as badly. I'm just really good at suppressing it in the moment. Mm -hmm. So I've last time I had a fucking terrible loss, and just to even it out, um, I hate to say terrible loss because it gives disrespect to people I lost to, but I got double upset at the Fend the North, and don't I don't even know what I placed. Like I didn't even look at at where I know. I, ended I know up. that feeling. So you know hard. I mean? yeah. So I got upset by someone I, I shouldn't have lost to, and you know so that feeling of like just despair just absolute like putting all the last couple months of practice or years or like since you started all that into like wait why can't i get past this point like 
these people have been playing for less time than me why are they beating me all this bullshit like there's such a weird phenomenon of like feeling like everything was a waste of time and that everything's impossible like in those first five minutes in those first like 20 seconds after a loss just feels like this impossibly bad i can't oh your dog's adorable <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're good. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Um, so yeah, just like that feeling of getting that loss, I think without those moments, it, it'd be hard to appreciate the rest of what's going on because it all comes down to how much we care and how much we want to like contribute to this overall kind of energy that the Melee community mm -hmm. or just like the, the game of it is. Like you want to be a a person that has done their own progress onto something that is so impossibly fun that yeah. when you feel like you got smacked down then that all comes crashing your whole ego gets burst like you took a like eight grams of mushrooms you know what i mean like yeah yeah it's, it's so surreal um i think the i guess the real thing is just coming back and rebounding and actually using it as a learning experience so it's, it's yeah. really cool to hear that you kind of pivoted that into uh, something that to this day you're, you've got a real long term like good perspective out of, yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely the whole the whole argument of like I'm playing I've been playing longer than you have so I should be better than you mentality is is super Toxic. fucked it's yeah. super fucked because there's it's just how how have you spent your time how have you utilize i've been playing longer than bobby big balls he is a better player than me because he has utilized his time more effectively he might do some of the craziest shit that i've ever seen i might do some of the craziest shit that he's ever seen the time difference does not signify that it's how you use your time when you're practicing do you study all of your vods are you are you really worth the JD Comedy Gaming, is that you? Yeah. Are you are, are you really worth the six years that you've put into it? Are you really six years worth of a good player? Or are you three years worth of a person in the community that just goes to tournaments and then three years of a good player? Um, it, it, it's crazy. It's absolutely insane. Yeah. I mean, whatever you put into it is obviously what you're going to get out. Um, I know I went through like three different crises in a row with IBDW who I pl I've been playing two years longer than and mm. I remember he came up and we played at a tournament when he was playing for like a, a year and change and I was playing for like two and a half or whatever it was and I beat him in tournament but it was like super close mm. and um, I remember thinking very little of it and then once he started to skyrocketing past it was kind of like an ego check like okay why is he so much better? Do I deserve that? Ultimately, like he deserves everything he gets and I'm deserving what I'm getting. And it's just kind of finding the balance of like, yeah, it doesn't matter. It's the same thing with like Zane, you know, when Zane popped up or same thing with yeah, yeah. every every new person that because right now every person that's played a year is better at a year than I was. That's just exactly it's just how the meta developed. We didn't yeah. have 20XX, dude. Yeah. When we started, 20XX literally was not a thing. You played right. vanilla melee, you beat up a CPU, and you practiced your ledge dashes while not getting hit by Falcon Jab. Like, that was yep. that was how that worked. I remember hitting Bowser just to get, like... <laughs> With the handicap on and Handicap Bowser, yeah. <laughs> That's the Eggum video, right? Yup. Just Nine, like... Full handicap, you're just practicing drill shines on him or something. Yeah. So you can get yeah. your L canceled down. Exactly. So it's like... Obviously, people who have these amazing tools that have guides from like point zero, like literally this is how you improve all of those tools at their disposal. Like, obviously, they're going to get better faster. Mm -hmm. I think it's just a matter of utilizing what tools we have and keeping it as this long term thing. Because when I think of my goals of because I think every player has top 100 goals, like, uh, yeah. Just a, it's just about when. <laughs> it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. When do you How recently... hard do I want to work for this? Yeah. Right. And so I think the first year I'm going to be kind of pushing for it is going to be 2020, like the end of 2020. 
that's mm-hmm. the year where I feel like I, if I kind of put the right amount of, because I know the steps now. Um, if I put the right steps forward, that's going to be the first year that it's possible. So it's just putting it all in perspective. It's all about perspective, I think, yeah. um, in a long-term sense. M- mentality of making sure you're, you've got your good breakfast, all that stuff. That's like the micro of it. But the long-term is, do you understand that this is just one piece of the puzzle? Every single tournament is just one extra little stepping stone. Right and, into the hole. Yep. Yeah, and if you just kind of use it correctly and, and make sure you're not screwing yourself over or overreacting to a win or a loss um and just kind of keeping your your path forward that's that's kind of where i'm at and it seems that you're in a really similar place yeah um when i because you were talking about your experience with ibdw and how it was kind of like an ego trip when he started doing really well but you weren't doing as well I uh I have a similar experience with Infinite Numbers. I know I've been bringing them up a lot, but he had a huge impact on me mentality-wise and in gameplay-wise because I ran his first tournament. I played him at his first tournament. Like we, I've known Jason since he started, and I was like, "Oh, you don't live too far from me. Like, let's go to tournaments together. Let's hang out. Let's do this. Let's do that." And right. we were close, close, close. And then he picked up Ice Climbers and just started fucking. Ch- you know what I mean? Yeah. And there was a there was a point of time where during the summer while I was still in high school, we went to it was like 15 tournaments in two weeks. Uh, we went to a tournament every single day for two weeks and I drove to every single one. And when I saw him, you know, he went to Summit. He became ranked in New England and I had been playing three times as long as he had. And he just, he had been, I I felt like I was the reason why he was getting good because I was driving him to everything. And it just, all of those thoughts and like, it's, it was, it should have been me. It was, why is he getting these wins? Why, what is wrong with me? How come I'm going like three, two when he's getting second to Slocks and Mafia? You know what I mean? Right. Like, how is he getting all of these crazy wins? And once I realized that all of these spiteful comments that I was having, all of this like I, I resented him because he was so much better than me but he was my friend and they were just combating each other I was like what am I supposed to do and when you get to that point it's just like dude you didn't earn it like <laughs> Jason yep. is it, sometimes you're just not born with the talent of it either sometimes you you start a game or you start learning something and you just don't have like the it doesn't click as fast or you don't think about it this way you might think about it the way everyone else thinks about it so people know how to beat your shit so when someone comes along with some new shit and starts beating everyone, you can't get mad at them because they play the game differently than you do because they have a different outlook on the game or they have a different perspective on the game. You have to just realize like, oh shit, I want to get to that point. It, it motivated the hell out of me. Just it, And he didn't say a single word. I never told him that like I'm pissed because you're good. I was always very supportive of him, but it was... It was something that, for me personally, I had to overcome if I wanted to become a better player. Because I couldn't go to tournaments with Jason, watch him do really well, watch myself do shit and be happy with it. Because right. every car ride home, I'd be like, hey man, good shit on second. He'd be like, what'd you get? I'd be like, ah, 13th. Like, it, it felt so bad. It felt just so bad to just kind of be like, I raised you and now you're my master to a degree. It, it made me feel like... I was doing something wrong when in reality it's just he got he clicked he he understands it IBDW he just grinded and it clicked for him he understood he had his goals in mind what he wanted Jason had told me I want to be top 50 never set a time on it I just want to be top 50 okay he got top 50 and then he was like okay that was easy that that didn't matter but for me it'd be like (laughs) wow playing against like the guy that's second seat at my local I'm like oh if I get this upset I'm gonna be so sick I'm so cool if I beat Squibble today or something like that. And he's like, dude, I could literally be Squibble with four different characters. It's just, it it clicks and you can't be mad at it. You got to applaud them. Thank you for doing so well because it's inspired me to do well. Right. And that's what I've gotten a lot from it, at least. Yeah, that's kind of the only way forward. Um, That's such a, man, what a a crazy, like, relationship to have with someone that close to, I guess, the talent, right? Like the juice of it um that's fucking wild yeah, yeah. man. all right so i see you're doing some <laughs> <laughs> i have two cameras you're double hooked up now i got two um, cameras yep there's one question in your chat 
I'm just gonna bring it up. Um, what's your advice for not getting tilted when people play whack as fuck? You want to take a swing at that one? Yeah, absolutely. So I've had to play Calvar for the past six years. <laughs> whack as fuck, if you ask me. Uh, in my mind, there are a lot of times where I'd just be like, wow, this is so fucking whack. How can he play the game like this? He has no respect for the art. Like, <laughs> no respect for the art. Yeah, what <laughs> most pretentious thing you could possibly say. No respect for the art, but it, when he f- would play every... when we, Because we played, like, twice a week. I'd be like, wow, this fucking sucks. Wow, this fucking sucks. I can't believe he did that. Wow, this fucking sucks. Uh, you have to realize that He's just going to keep beating your ass if you keep thinking like that. He's just going to keep doing it because he wants the win. If he's going to play whack as fuck, that means he has a reasoning behind it. He's got motives. He wants to do well. So he thinks that this strategy will let him do well. And if you allow him to think that and you allow him to execute that plan, he's just going to do it. The best way to beat that is to either study his game plan or to just try and get better at adapting. Watching what he's doing while he plays the game and thinking mid-game. Okay, if he's going to dash dance and then just wait for me to approach and grab me or up tilt me, then I need to play more patient than he does. I found that when playing against people that are better than you, a lot of the time it comes down to can they wait that one extra step? Are they willing to wait that extra second? Do that one more dash to the left? do that one more dash into the right, maybe just to throw you off guard. Maybe they'll do a short hop in place just to throw you off. If you can do that one extra second wait, that'll put you a whole tier above the people underneath you that can't figure it out yet. It's like a whole new game once you figure out, oh, if I just wait one extra second, I get a free opening. I get free combo. I get free percent. I can get a free kill. I can win a set because I waited that one extra second because they weren't ready for it. Um, that is what I would do, at least. I don't know what you think about that, but I learned that from Dark Tooth, waiting yeah. that one extra second. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a very Dark Tooth thing. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's, well, I played uh, him. In, yeah, I played him, and he waited that one extra second at every neutral interaction. And at right. first, I'm like, this guy's playing so fucking lame. I'm just getting hit by his stupid shit because he's waiting. But then I realized, wait a second, I'm just a fucking idiot for not waiting with him. I'm an idiot for just going into his game plan. I'm playing his game when I want to be playing either my game or playing a similar game. Right. It just he, they take advantage of it. No, on the similar vein, um, there was a story where I was at a house tournament and Chess's house tournament. And I was playing Kaon, and um, I was up four stocks to one in the first game. Four stocks to one on Kaon, and so he comes down. I was hyper so he like back airs me. I'm like, all right, so I just need to. Like, we all know Kaon. Like, <laughs> you know, we're, you know, we're, we're good buddies. Like, I know this guy. I know what, what could happen. I know what he's trying to do. I'm not going to let him do it. I'm just going to keep lasering him. Like, do my game plan. And he just, like, goes over, starts full hopping by the ledge. I'm like, I'm not going to approach this. And he does, like, two full hops. And then I just approach it without even thinking. And he back- muscle Muscle memory. Yeah. yeah. Back throw shines. Back throw shines. Like, all right. Didn't work. Reset. Still up two stocks to one. Long story short, he he fucking did it again, and then like zero to death me with the combo. So he reverse four stocked me, doing like patented K on stuff. Mm-hmm. And I she think you already knew. Right. Like I knew like before we even played the game. This is exactly what I knew he was gonna do. And the reason I went up four stocks to one is because I just like I literally lasered him. And then would bait him out and then punish his um, terrible approaches. Right. He, all his game plan is is waiting for other people to approach. Yeah. So I just I, I executed on that plan and then just it all fell apart. And so I think what like I didn't win the set. So it, it's the, the advice here isn't like how to overcome that and beat all these people. But when you're asking about like not getting tilted, I think a big thing is to realize that if like they're beating you there is always a way to counter it always um th- at the highest peak level you saw hungry box do the most whack as fuck and armada beat it so there is a counterplay to all the nonsense that is going on against you so as the second you take responsibility for everything that you do 
and you realize that you can counterplay their nonsense or you can at least take you said take an extra second sometimes if they're camping you take 10 seconds just go and be like F i could play this game too just prove to them that you're as patient as they're being that you can play defensive that you can kind of take every advantage that they're going to let you take um just just own responsibility for your part in them succeeding and then you can kind of even if you lose you're like all right like at least i knew how to play it and yeah. they executed their plan super well like Kaon wins games because like it goes it's really underrated but he's grinded out all those scenarios to like the max that you could possibly grind them out so mm -hmm. he has his win condition and he doesn't just stumble on it he's he's practiced it so you have to give respect to it and you have to kind of go in with your own sense of identity and be like i can fucking do it yeah it's never unbeatable and when you're in those situations where you do start beating it you have to be cool if they start coming back it's always what was your game plan in the beginning go back to it maybe they've adapted to it but you can make a small adjustment to it right. like if if the overall game plan is solid and one piece of it gets exposed by the other person you can just take out that one piece or replace it with something else and then you still have your solid overall decent game plan and then you just be cool just be cool the whole time have you ever like been in a situation where it's really really fucking tense and you don't know what to say to yourself but you noticed that you started thinking like the whole set you weren't thinking but all of a sudden it's like maybe it's two stocks to two stocks in its last game and then yeah. it's last stock and you're thinking about it and you're like holy fuck this is really tight this is a tight battle uh i'm thinking i need to stop thinking stop thinking oh my god i'm getting comboed what the fuck i don't yep. know how to die i just got it started <laughs> and i just threw it away it's like, so relatable as soon as that starts as soon as you can feel yourself start thinking I always just tell myself, be cool, stop thinking. Like, you, you don't even have to say stop thinking to yourself because you should just say, be cool. That's what I do. I took it from a Tekken player, Eris, avoiding the puddle. Huge, huge. He's like the, uh, uh, I don't know how to put it. Who's like a really, really notable commentator and streamer from Melee or like from another game that you know? Like, um, uh, like, a, like imagine if like Scar streamed or something. Right, if Scar just okay. streamed all the time, uh, but way more mellow, and he just goes, "Be cool, just be cool." Like that's it. There's no, there's no meaning behind it. There's no meaning that it's supposed to like do for you. You just, <laughs> you fill your mind with "be cool," and then you're not thinking. You're autopiloting to a degree, but if you're in that mentality of like really tightness, you just be cool, and you can stay calmer than the other person. Right, because players that give those, because I'm, I'm taking whack as fuck as like campy like mm -hmm. their whole strategy is to like just take tempo from you or to get you tilted because they're looking out for the signs that you <coughs> dropped your game plan or you're not playing comfortable or you're in your own head like they've recognized those signs i'm, I'm sure calvar knows when you start when you dr drop that first l cancel or you start doing weird movement that's suboptimal Spot dodging whatever. in place yeah right so that that's when they know like okay now it's time to really like bring the guillotine down that's your name also that's hilarious but guillotine. that is kind of when they know to strike so the game plan is less about don't approach when to approach all that stuff like you could lab that out you can um kind of understand all that shit but really you said it best be cool it's just about don't give them what they want mm -hmm. by them playing whack as fuck because when you when you flip the game on them when you start playing at your game when you start playing at your pace they have no idea what to do they get so flustered like when i do play calvar and i bring it really close and i start playing my own game and all of a sudden every game is either last dog last hit or i might take a game or something like there is a lot of visible frustration coming out of him or you can see it in his play where he gets more panicky option he should be doing this why isn't he doing this like why isn't he spot dodging in the center of stage like i'm calvar i beat his ass uh like he'll get into his own head about it or like a player of that caliber that just knows that i'm gonna tilt this dude with everything i have and it doesn't work, all of a sudden they're like, oh, fuck, well, that was my game plan. What do I do now? And while they're thinking about what their new game plan is, you're beating the shit out of them with your game plan. And right. that could totally change the tie of a set. All of a sudden, you're the one tilting them because they couldn't get their shit off. Yeah. Um, 
you got to realize that these people um, that you think are just way better than you, that there's no way you could beat them, like, at every stage, as long as it's not, like, you're the 10th seed and you're trying to beat the 1 seed, like, there's obviously levels to this, mm -hmm. but when you're in those adjacent levels, like, even two or three spots, you think that they're just, like, way better than you. Once you crack that one little thing that they're doing that just always beats you, like, it's not about going from a four stock to a three stock to a two. Sometimes it's just going from like a four stock. All of a sudden you're, you're almost being these people. Like it's yeah. just one or two little differences. The habits and, that you figure out. Right. And, and being able to actually play melee. Cause what's tilting you is that you don't feel like you're actually playing the game that you feel like you're playing some weird, bizarro version of melee where it's just, can I like a mini game? <laughs> can I beat Marth full hopping? Like, all this weird shit that it's not fun like no beat that little thing and then you get to play melee again it's exciting speaking Long of playing melee down smash speaking of play do you want to play some uh you want to you want to call it quits and play some net plays we got any uh, real quick a total pwn got upset at my local and put my head to the grindstone and thought only about melee won 14 games in a row 6 0 the guy lost two in grants what was your mentality going into it what what did you what was going through your head when you got upset at the local? Did you think, fuck this, I just want to play the game, or were you still upset about your winner's loss? I have to make up for it. Um, I do want to play melee. Absolutely, that would be fucking sick. <laughs> uh, I want to hear I want to hear what this guy has to say too, because that feels like something. That's I a need dope to... comeback. That's a dope I, that's comeback. A, yeah, that's a sick run to make. Um, it's hard to take a loss and actually convert it into positive energy. A lot of times you'll get like, a lot of times I'll just get over a loss. I won't like swivel back. Do you play auto chess? No, not as much. Uh, there's a concept of like lose streaking where the more you lose, the more money you get. Mm. And then you kind of like really turn your momentum up. So sometimes just getting a big loss or getting upset just activates something in you. But Let's see. I was blaming the Marth Ditto. I was getting in my own head after game one. I realized the Marth Ditto was still melee <laughs> and just decided to keep playing the game, trying my best. Exactly. You That's just it, play. Man. You just want to try. Like, like my mentality going into every single tournament now is just, I don't care how I do. I don't care about my result. I don't care about who I beat. I just want to play good melee. I just want melee to like, I just want to see good melee. I just want to watch good melee. I want to be a part of good melee. So when I play and I lose to someone, damn, I think I was playing pretty good. That guy just straight up outplayed me, even though I might've gotten cheesed a couple stocks. Like he hit his shit and I did not. Like, that's it. Um, that kind of mentality keeps me alive in losers, I'd like to think. Because once you think like that, it's less of, I can't believe I just fucking lost. I'm in losers now, this is so fucking stupid. More of like, oh, well, I guess I just gotta play a little bit better, you know? Word. I always make an upset of trying my best and thinking about it. Which I just realized thanks to you guys. Yeah, it's not... It, the, the, here's my favorite uh, like little blurb that I've thought of over the years. It's not about... like It's not about making the upset and being the best. It's about having fun with the game. When you have fun with the game, you progressively get better because you're playing the game because you enjoy it so much. You try new things because you like how the game looks and you like how it feels and you like how, like, oh, I got a new option. Like, I can use that somewhere. Uh, it, when you're having fun, the results just kind of come. They just kind of happen. You don't think about the results. You don't think about, I want to beat this really good player. I must beat this really good player. I'm going to study this really good player all the time because you're just going to get bored. You're going to be like, all I do when I play this game is study and grind and study and grind and my efforts don't get paid off. But when you're playing the game and you're like, wow, I fucking love this game so much, like results will just happen because you're just playing the game because you enjoy it and you're playing it how you want to play it because you enjoy the game so much. You're also going to outlast those people that are taking the other approach and either getting burnt out or just getting discouraged because they're going to stop going to tournaments and not have that same consistent grind that the person who just plays for the sake of it. Like, why why play this game if it's not because you are just having the most fun? Like, there's no money in this fucking game. There's no, like path towards success there's nothing guaranteed or simple about being a melee player so if you're going to play it just play it for the maximum fun points 
and you'll have the longest career out of the the person who has the most fun is going to have the longest career, no doubt. That's why Mango is still relevant. You think I was Mango's literally still... about to bring up Mango? I was like literally about to bring up. Mango. <laughs> like he is having such a like a long career because he just loves the game, man. Like he just plays it because he loves it, and that leads to him wanting to get better and wanting the wins and taking it seriously, like when he does. But everyone wants to be like Mango. Just be like Mango. It's very easy. Yeah, melee is just a water man. It's just a body of water. I bet True Dad loves this game. No comment. <laughs> All right, man. So uh, any last words before we wrap up the pod and, and play some friendlies? No, thank you so much for having me on. This is sick. Uh, I, I think we got, you know, some good talkage in today. Pretty cool. Pretty fun. I think some some good points were made. Dude, some- I think you should start one of these. You think so? <laughs> yeah, you got I, a lot I, of good shit to say. It's so funny that you say that. My buddy, Raph, he used to play a lot. He was a really good PM player. He was one of the top players of uh, New England in PM, too, and it was big. Uh, he told me I should get a podcast. because It's I, so easy, bro. I, I, I have the connection. It's so simple. Like you, if, you, if you do it right, too, like you could pop off, no doubt. Mm-hmm. But anyway, thanks for coming on. Um, let's, let's play some Melee, and... Uh, I gotta meet you at the next major. We gotta, we gotta bull out. I gotta bull the fuck out. I'll be at Shine and Big House probably. Ooh, I'll see you at Shine. Ooh. All right, you hosting? Yeah, I'll host. All right. Fucking hell yeah.